Well, hello, viewers, and welcome back to another episode of The Model Guy. And in this episode, I'm building Edward's Mark I Spitfire. And this isn't going to be a typical build video where I show everything in depth. There are plenty of channels out there of people building this kit and producing some very fantastic results. I chose to use this kit as what's known as a slammer build. You might be wondering, what's a slammer build? I haven't heard of that before. Well, a slammer build is a kit that you pretty much slam together. Now, a lot of people do this to restore their mojo. Maybe you're stalled in a kit, or maybe you're just not sure what to build next, and you just want to build something. And that's where this Spitfire came into play. After a few nights building Kinetics Tracker and Royal Canadian Navy markings, my phone that I used as a camera flat out died. And rather than halt the build and wait for a new camera, I decided just to press on without filming anything. And it was kind of a nice break. There wasn't a pressure of having a deadline to finish for and a video to edit afterwards. Don't get me wrong though, I do enjoy doing that. It was just a nice little change of pace. And then when the new camera arrived, it was time to start a new project that would go together quickly with little fuss and I could really test out the new camera and what it could do. The Edward Mark I Spitfire fits the bill as a slammer build because it goes together with almost no fuss and within two nights I had the fuselage together and was ready to move on to painting. Other than a little bit of chipping and some pin washes, I kept things pretty simple inside the cockpit. The main effort of this build was going to be on the exterior paint. I also wasn't looking to win any awards or set the world on fire. I just wanted to have a nice, simple build. Normally I could bury a lot of time in the cockpit using different oil paints, layering techniques and filters to make it more interesting, but I wanted to try working with a minimal palette. Total time spent on the cockpit of this kit was only about five hours. The only real critique I have of Edward's Mark I Spitfire kit is the way the leading edge slash wing root sections go together. For some reason, the first time I built this kit, I followed the instructions by placing these inserts here, but then the leading edge of the wing didn't want to line up properly with the nose of the kit. So this time around, I decided to glue that section to the wing to get it all aligned nicely, and then pop the fuselage down. And it gave me a very nice fit at the front of the wing with very little cleanup. Before any primer can go down on the model kit, one thing I will do is give it a thorough cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. And the whole idea here is to get rid of dust and oils that have been left there from cleanup or from handling the kit with bare hands. All these things can lead to failure of the primer to stick. I blast the isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA, on pretty heavy, and then wipe it off with a lint-free shop cloth to get rid of anything it's lifted up. Before painting the exterior colors on the model though, one thing I did was lay down the interior colors on the canopy rails, and this gives your eye the impression that the inside of the rail has been painted, when in reality it's the outside of the clear plastic. Keeping with the minimalistic approach to this model, I only used three paints per color, if that makes sense, on the aircraft. For example, on the bottom, I laid down a very thin coat of sky on top of the primer. That way the gray still showed through a little bit. And then I came in with my first shading color, which was RLM gray. This was kind of a surprise because there was a little bit of a green tone to that that actually went really well with the sky. Once that tone was down, I went with a lighter color, which was flat white. And the whole idea here is when I come back in with the sky blend layer, is I can really control how much wear and tear the paint has to it. Really thinning down the paint, that allows me to control how much of that shading shows through. This is basically a really extravagant black basing technique but by adding different colors, you can really play with what's going on. The nice thing about using these Yushi templates for painting is that it gives you a more random effect. Humans like to see patterns and things, and I noticed before in my older videos when I would do this by hand and no templates, I would start to repeat my patterns pretty quick. The Yushi templates just make things go a lot quicker. I didn't leave myself enough weathering around the gun ejection ports, so what I ended up doing was coming back in with the RLM gray and just lightly feathering in some filth to that panel. I have a few reference photos of Spitfire's bellies, and those things got filthy. 
The colors on top of the Spitfire received the same treatment as underneath. Three colors from the Spectrum were used and they were blended together until I was happy with the wear and tear. I had a hard time picking one of the aircraft to do from Edwards Boxing of the few. There's a lot of great looking Spitfires in there with the white and silver and black bottoms, but there's also a lot of budding aces in there as well. And I ended up choosing Sailor Milan's mount to do. Adolf Sailor Milan got his nickname because he joined the Royal Navy Reserve as an acting sub-lieutenant, and he ended up transferring into the Royal Air Force as they were expanding their training program leading up to the war. Milan had shown a lot of leadership skills during his training, and he was actually an acting flight lieutenant just as the war kicked off. It didn't start so well for him, though, because during the first few hours of the war, his flight was vectored in to intercept what they thought were going to be Luftwaffe bombers, and they ended up shooting down several of their own aircraft, with one Royal Air Force officer being killed in the melee. This was one of the few blemishes on Sailor Milan's career, as he quickly distinguished himself as a fighter pilot during the battle over Dunkirk, where he shot down five aircraft. He even showed the calmness under fire to disengage from the battle, change the light bulb that had burnt out on his gun sight before re-engaging. During the Battle of Britain, Milan was promoted to be an acting squadron commander, and three days later, on August 11th, his squadron was responsible for claiming 38 aircraft shot down, also known as Sailor's August 11th. Milan's active service as a fighter pilot came to a close in August 1941 when he was withdrawn from frontline service for arrest. After touring the United States, he returned to England to work at the Central Gunnery School and then was later promoted to wing commander. Even working as a wing commander, Milan still managed to sneak out on a few operations and actually led the Free French Wing in time for D-Day. By war's end, Sailor Milan had 27 kills. He was also one of the few RAF officers to serve his entire career in fighter command. And now back to the build. This time around, I wanted to use Edward's Deckel straight from the box and not attempt to peel them because some people have been saying that they're thick and they're having trouble getting them to seat. I found that with a few coats of Tamiya's super strong Mark Fit, the decals seem to go down nicely. Continuing deeper into the weathering stage, I mixed up a panel line wash using Absalung Industrial Earth and some enamel odorless thinner. After running the pin wash along the bottom of the aircraft to bring out all the details, I then used a shop cloth to wipe the excess away. If you're having trouble removing the panel line wash, I find that using a shop cloth with some enamel thinner lightly moistened makes it easier. If you put too much thinner on the cloth, it simply pushes the panel liner out of place and you pretty much have to start again. There's just something so satisfying and mesmerizing about running a panel line wash, especially when it's doing most of the work itself. For the oil streaking on the bottom of the aircraft, I used Abtlung oil again, but this time I didn't thin it down too much, instead preferring it to be on the tad on the thick side. This way it was easier to streak, coming in with a brush moistened with enamel thinner. For the guys who are right now typing in the comments section that, hey, Spitfires didn't get that dirty, they were only in service for a few hours, I have a photo for you. Now, I'm not telling people that they need to make their aircraft weathered and dirty. That's far from my point. What I'm wanting to say here is that I like to build my aircraft weathered and with this type of character. I have nothing against people that build clean builds. That's their thing as well. Just don't try to force your opinion on somebody else as if it's fact, because it's not. Anyways, that's enough ranting for one video. Moving into the gun smoke and streaking on the aircraft, I use a stippling brush to blend it in. And I find this method works a little bit better than when I try to do this with the airbrush. It's a little more random and I'm able to get the effect I want. To break up the green and brown on top of the aircraft, I decided to use the oil paint rendering method, also known as OPR. And this is basically when you make a localized little oil filter. And when you blend it in, it gives you some pretty cool effects on top of the paint. By doing this in multiple layers and using a hair dryer to speed up the drying time, you're able to get some pretty cool effects in a short amount of time. Now for something I am pretty stoked about with this build, and that's how my exhaust turned out. 
This is still one of those things that is kind of elusive and I've tried several different techniques and this is one of the first times I'm actually really happy with how they turned out. Using reference photos of modern Spitfires that have been restored, I noticed that the exhaust isn't just a rusty color or a gray color and there's actually different tones in the metal. So what I've done here is come in with two different grays and then a lighter gray and then pushed it all back with some thinned down rubber black using a stencil a little bit of a distance from the exhaust that way to give me a softer edge. One cool thing about these Yushi stencils or any stencil you use is you can get multiple effects out of it. If you lay it directly on the surface of something you get a hard edge. If you pull it away a few centimeters you get a much softer edge. Once all the airbrush work was done I then came in with an enamel rust wash just to try to bring some more tones to the exhaust and anywhere where there's a light gray underneath that is really going to pop the rust wash. But I was very careful to put it in areas that made sense, like where the welds were done in the exhaust and at the very end. Something was still missing from the exhaust at this point, so I decided to try some Vallejo metal pigments. So I used their dark steel pigment just to bring a little bit of shine to the exhaust. And again, I used this in a very small controlled amount. By using a silicone brush, I was able to polish in a little bit more of a shine. As this video comes to a close, I'd like to thank my patrons for their support. 132 scale supporters get one week early ad-free access to videos, and 148 scale supporters get them 24 hours early as well, ad-free. 172 scale supporters also have access to all the high-def photos and blog posts, and contact me through the messaging service. You can also support this channel by subscribing, making sure your notifications are set, and leaving a comment in the comment section below. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as it was a slightly different approach and I'm going to leave you with some high def photos. Until next time, I'm Robbie and I am the Model Guy.